Hi, in this video we will continue solving exercises from uh, chapter 3. What we're actually showing is possible answers, uh, possible solutions for these exercises that are needed for Unit 4. So in this exercise program, in exercise 3.8, we, uh, we, what we want is just to compute the greatest common divisor of two positive integers. And it's explaining here. So again, it's the, the, the hardest part is you are don't remember this from uh, algebra. It's probably going to take you uh, some time. But um, it's, it's explaining here the steps of your algorithm. So look, you just follow the explanation of number one. So there's one, two, and three. So number one, compute the reminder. So here is the reminder. So in, in the input, we got first and second. And first is the larger and second is the, I mean, first, I'm sorry, is the smaller and the other is the larger. We don't call it larger and smaller because those are going to change because of what they said on step number two. So on the step number one, it says computer reminder of dividing the larger. So the larger is the second, the first time, the second divided. So to get the reminder of, we do the percentage symbol. And then it says by the smaller and the smaller is going to be first. So that's what a step it says replace the larger with the smaller. So now second is first and first is reminder. That's what they said. Replace the larger with the smaller and the smaller with the reminder. We did the replacement. And then it says repeat until it's zero. So repeat is a while. So we keep doing this until the smaller number is zero. So with the way that we're doing the reminder, eventually this will go into zero, the reminder, right? So here first is the smaller. Remember that was replaced by, replaced by the reminder. So this while or this loop continues while this is greater than zero. That means it's not zero. And that's what three says, that you repeat it until that happens. Exercise 3. Point, a program in exercise 3.9, what they're asking us is that we're going to get a sequence of numbers, a series of numbers that is going to be given, given by the user. You see that the user enters a number 1, 2, 3, and then when uh, the, I mean, it's just going to ask him, enter a number, enter a number, enter a number. So in this case, in the example, they enter 1, 2, and 3. So 1 plus 2 plus 3, the sum is 6, and the average will be that 6, which is the sum, divided by 3, which is 2. Okay, the way that this ends is when they press enter, that means it's the empty stream. Okay, now there is a possibility when we're doing the loop that the user doesn't just want to do any and they press enter the first time, so this will be the sum will be a zero, and then the count is going to be zero, and then uh, we just uh, don't want to have a possible division of 0 divided by 0. So let's see. So here we got the sum and count. So we're going to use, we're going to be adding all the numbers in this variable. So we initialize the variable. So here we're going to count how many. We're going to need that for the average, which is here. You see, once we sum, we divide it by count, and that will give us the average. So this is an infinite loop. So this is looping. Remember that the indentation is important. So here it says true. So we're asking for a number. If the number, if they didn't give me a number, they just press enter. We break the loop and we do nothing. So this is the case that the sum is zero. And then the answer will be just the zero and there will be no average for that in that case. Or we can put, if this is the case, maybe we can add an else here and say that the average is zero. Now, if that was an ent, if that was an enter, then we are not executing this if statement, and then we are adding to whatever is in the sum the number given, and then we count it. So we count one number, and then we look back and we ask for another number, and so on. So once we exit, and the only way that we exit is because the user hit an enter, then we got the sum again. If the count was greater than zero, this is just to avoid dividing by zero that we don't want this divided by zero because this will break our program. For the last exercise, which is program in exercise 3.10, we have a long reading and that's the part that is confusing, especially the first part in which is describing the formulas like uh, 
So it says here that, so, sorry, that we will have a 10% a, a down from the purchase price. So look at that we're asking here for the purchase price. And um, the interest rate is fixed, 0.12, so we don't need to ask, so we have here like a constant. So this is the annual rate, the monthly rate will be that annual rate divided by 12. So we're asking, and now here, look at the way that they say here, monthly payments are 5% of the listed purchase price. So here, 0 0.5 is the 5%, but it's the purchase price minus the down payment. And the down payment comes from 10% of the purchase, right? So here is 10% of the purchase. So this is purchase minus down payment. Then 5% of that will be the monthly. And then... Uh, that's that's the monthly uh, payment. So now they want us to, uh, with all that information, display what is listed there, and uh, in a table. So we had to format, and then here is uh, given uh, an example in which the purchase price was two hundred, and then how is that that balance is changing? So we just need to be able to set up the formulas there and we're iterating so we have a for loop there so here this is the print statement for the header of the table now you can see it there and then we're going to be iterating as long as uh, there is a balance greater than zero right so if there is a balance greater than zero we have to have that payment so here is computing the updating the uh, So look all the formulas that we have. So here we check in if the monthly payment is greater than balance, then the monthly payment is balanced. Let's say that the very last, the very last payment in that case is uh, I don't know. We just have a balance of twenty, but the monthly payment was fifty. So the last payment should be just twenty, right? So otherwise, you're gonna overpay. That's 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 what they have on here. Otherwise. Then uh, the the way that we compute the interest is whatever is the remaining balance we multiply by the monthly rate that was computed over here. I mean this is just uh, formulas on how to uh, understand the balance. So the principle is whatever you still owe is going to be the monthly payment minus interest, and then uh, the remaining balance. I mean all the formulas are there, and then here this is the way that we're going to format the table. Okay, and then we're going to be looping. So look at again the indentation. That means all of this is going to be repeated until the balance. I mean, while the balance is greater than zero. That means when we pay, when the balance goes to zero, then uh, then we stop. <laughs>